you had a question for me. Yes. Why are you doing this? Because your mom is cool. <laughs> okay, down now. <laughs> okay. Wait, I have to talk to them. See? <laughs> Hi, guys. Okay. So, uh, welcome to Diplomatic License on City TV. My name is Apioko. Oh, let me catch my breath. So, I'm coming to see Her Excellency Diana Concha. Ambassador of the European Union to Ghana for part two of our conversation. Remember last week we went to the beach, we did a cleanup, we had a great conversation at her residence. And then when I got here, remember Olivia, my co-host? She dragged me onto the trampoline. <laughs> there she is. So we jumped a bit, I've had my workout. Um, let's go meet Her Excellency now. Stay tuned, remember we're live on DSTV channel 363 and GoTV channel 182. Use the hashtag Diplomatic license. <laughs> Olivia, <laughs> use the hashtag diplomatic license to stay in touch with us and to remain interactive. Once again, my name is Apioko. Welcome. Excellency. Welcome. Thank Good you. To see you Good to see now. you. Thank you for having me a second time. A pleasure. Good and for welcoming us into your home. So the last time I was here, I mean, we spoke a lot about your art and your passion for art and how you're supporting Ghanaian artists, but we didn't really get to explore it. So I think maybe we can show them a bit of your art collection and then maybe take a look at your beautiful garden. It's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I wouldn't call it an art collection. And by the way, most of it is not mine because it's uh, either on loan or it's uh, actually it's going to stay here when I leave. Okay. But um, yeah, I, uh, I liked that before coming to Ghana, but uh, a bit like it happened with the environment, it became a passion when I came to Ghana because there are so many great artists. So um, we would like to take advantage of our stay here to, uh, to support them, to show some of them and, uh, and also to simply meet some of them uh, and, and make a little bit of publicity. That's very noble of you and thank you because art is something that is not really celebrated. I'm sure you've discovered in Ghana there aren't that many people or big bodies that are supporting us. So for someone like you, your capacity as the ambassador of the European Union, as a representative of the EU to support Ghanaian artists, we're very grateful to you for doing that. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to show you a few of the things and okay. uh, again some of them are mine and some others are uh, okay. uh, owned by the European Union. Okay. Starting with this, uh, the, the four um, either statuettes, okay. this is actually recycled material. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a Ghanaian artist, it's Nigerian, it's okay. called uh, Joseph Kola and he works with the Artists Alliance and his works uh, can be found uh, at, uh, in, in several places in Ghana, like hotels or restaurants, okay. the Coco Lounge, I think, okay. like two of them. Okay, so it looks like a band, so yeah. you're playing the drum, the guitar, um, is it the saxophone? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the other one looks like uh, some very long yes. flute or something, I don't know. Yeah, this is a band, actually this was chosen by my husband, uh, who oh. likes music very much, so he wanted the musician going up the <laughs> stairs. And this will be, when we go back to Brussels, we'll go, we will continue to go up the stairs, but in a different place. Okay, okay. Um, the piece I am uh, most proud of um, is the one that I was sitting in front when you came last week. Yes. Um, this is from uh, Gabriel Eklu, who okay. is, I think, a quite well-known Ghanaian artist. Yes, she is. Uh, he has uh, a wonderful uh, studio full of, uh, of uh, paintings like this. It's really difficult to so see. So this is a baobab tree, I'm guessing. Yeah, and okay. this is a school and, uh, well, this painting will stay here okay. when I leave, unfortunately. So like a school and a tree. Yeah. Yeah, it's a school under a tree and he has this collection of baobabs which is simply fantastic and uh, also another style that he has is this women or figures very very thin okay. with these long flowing dresses, this is it's really beautiful. It's beautiful. 
It's beautiful. Okay, and then what else do you want to share with us? Um, well, actually, I want to show something which is not from Ghana, okay. but this is for, uh, from uh, my home country. One is from my home country and the other one is from Uruguay, which is the country where I have lived for four years, okay. but has in fact a certain connection with, with Ghana. So this, this piece, this, uh, this is a piece of ceramic, this okay. is a lot of uh, sort of a tile. Um, and this is, uh, you know, the, the princess and, and, uh, and the frog. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, and this was a, a wedding present from a friend of mine who is actually the artist who, who has painted this. And I'm showing it because uh, ceramic with this color that reminds the sea and the sun is typical from, uh, my, from my region. Actually, these are made in uh, a small town called Vietri, which is close to my hometown. Okay. And it's a very, very strong part of the tradition. You find them everywhere uh, in the region. So, uh, I like to, so, to mix it with, uh, if you want, with the Ghanaian, uh, so, Ghanaian so culture. The, so the artist paints on ceramic? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, um, uh, she, she also used to have the oven and now she's she retired, she can't work anymore, but she used to have the oven and do everything herself in, uh, actually next to her house. It's, it's beautiful. And uh, these two um, uh, sort of bottles or amphors. Okay. Um, okay. They're also from her. <sighs> And you see it's the same color. Uh, yes. Uh, so she likes so to work so with blues and greens. Yeah, and this, is, uh, this was actually a, a series that she made. Uh, that one belongs to a series on fairy tales. Uh, and okay. this one were also from the same series, so with okay. the same color. So I see so. a mermaid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This was uh, indeed represented the mermaid. And this one, frankly, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. And then I wanted to show you another one. Okay. So this is a painting. Uh, from Uruguay, where should I start? Okay. This is a painting from Uruguay. Okay. Uh, Uruguay is a, a very tiny South American country. Actually, it's not so small. It has uh, more or less the same uh, surface as Ghana, but it is almost empty of people. It's hmm. only three and a half million people living there, so it's basically wow. empty. That's small. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a small country, <laughs> but uh, it's very interesting. Its uh, population is uh, I think 98% uh, white mm -hmm. because they are all descends and descendants from Spaniards and Italians. But it has a small um, a minority of African origins. It's um, former slaves that were coming from Brazil because okay. Uruguay shares a border with Brazil. Right. And uh, they have a huge influence in the culture of the country. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, a scene from uh, a music style. It's from a carnival, actually. Okay. This is the carnival of Montevideo, where they play a mu music which is called candombe. Okay. And candombe is played on, on the, these tall drums that you see here, and it's totally African. Mm -hmm. And you see the people are black. <laughs> They, they, and they're even dressed like people from maybe the northern parts. They're holding the drums like yeah. some, some Ghanaian drummers yes, would do. Exactly. It is really impressive is because remarkable. they are a tiny part of the population, but they have a huge influence in the culture. That is remarkable. And they are very much respected uh, in, uh, in Ghana. Actually, you know, uh, it's very funny. Um, when in Spanish, in Ghana, you call someone negro or negra, it's a compliment, it's an affection. Whether you're black or not, by the way, they call you negra. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's really a form of affection. So uh, it is the contrary of what the, the, the term would imply in these in, terms, yes, in, uh, you know, in, in, in more moments. other Western yeah. countries. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, it is, uh, it is funny because I also show you now something else in the okay. other room. And you see it looks African, but it's again from Uruguay. Okay. So, took you. Oh my. So there's two statues here. Oh, are you sure this is not Ghanaian Which country, Nigeria? yeah, which, is, which country in Africa they come from? They come from Uruguay again. It's impressive. This is amazing. So I'm get, this is, they're carrying water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a fisherman. Wow. The other one is a fisherman. He could be a fisherman from, uh, you know, from Jamestown. Even Jamestown, no? Town. Yeah. right? Oh, this is brilliant. Wow. So I, I mean, I never knew that there were there was a, an Afro Uruguayan, should we call it that, population. I never knew. Me neither. 
before going there. I they are not known that. at all outside, but again, they are very uh, important and very influential. Uh, Thank you yeah. very much for sharing this with me. And I like very much to put the, these things together uh, because it's a very nice bridge yes. uh, between cultures. Yes. So. yes, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. So the last pieces I wanted to show, okay. and this is really, I have to show them to thank those that gave them to me on, uh, on loan. Okay. They are coming from the uh, Cunyaya uh, Trust. Cunyaya. <laughs> Cunyaya, I'm sorry, my pronunciation <laughs> of is really terrible. It's a difficult name even for Ghanaian, so you're good. <laughs> so the story is that we started to, um, to talk to them, to try and organize an art exhibition okay. uh, that, of course, like so many other things, uh, was put uh, on hold by the coronavirus. Mm. But we will do it. We will do it next February. So we'll I hope be there. I will miss you exactly. I don't have a choice. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so you will be there for uh, certainly for the, the opening of that. Um, the uh, Cunyeya Trust uh, supports young artists. So we wanted to do it in connection with the support that European Union gives to uh, young people in Ghana to find jobs. Art and tourism can also be a very effective source of jobs. Uh, then again, we, we will certainly do it, but uh, in the meantime, uh, they agreed to give me some uh, works to put uh, in my residence. This room where we're in is a sort of the uh, official meeting room uh, slash dining room. Okay. It, uh, it can be used for both. Okay. Uh, this big table is for the social distancing, as yes. you can see, or, or can to see have big the, meetings. I can see the container on there. Ah, yeah, in the, the middle. Kenta, Kenta is wonderful. Yes. So, um, so they agreed to give me this, this works, but then almost no one still saw them because of basically college. the week after that we, they came and they hung the paintings, uh, we had the lockdown oh. and very, very few people have seen them. So every time I can, uh, like if somebody interviews me or I recall the video or something, I try to put myself here because I'm very grateful for, to yes. them for uh, uh, having given me these beautiful paintings, but, uh, uh, but very few people have seen They're them. They're beautiful. So I see, okay. Um, so this is Asaya Kwejo Boating, acrylic paint on canvas. It's lovely. The and three are from the same artists. Yes, same artists. Yeah, and they all, uh, uh, they are also beautiful because they represent uh, uh, Ghanaian people at work. Uh, yes. But all of them has this, uh, they are holding a blue rose. Uh, yes, uh, what, what does that mean? I don't remember. It's, I have to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. the, um, the lady at the gallery explained this to me, but I don't remember. So let's say that everybody can imagine and yeah. see whatever they want. It's, they're beautiful. And they're of women. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other one is a guy. Okay, so there's a guy there. Okay, so he looks like a, a cobbler, I think. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yes. So it's ordinary workers, but uh, they have, uh, uh, I think, a very, very big dignity. And, yes. and they, they are very colorful and they look good, which, uh, you know, is... Uh, I think uh, uh, there can be marvelous art, but it's very strong and can be upsetting. In the same gallery, they had uh, um, a small exhibition on slavery, hmm. so they had some very, very strong stuff where you could see it. it was beautiful. They were big paintings, they look abstract, but then when you looked better, you could see um, uh, blood and you could see, I don't know, some a cut member or something like that. So I, I didn't want them in my house. Yeah. They were too yeah. much so, and so they could be disturbing for, for people since this is a place, you know, it's a public place yes. somehow. But they were very beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, Excellency, for sharing your, your the, the art that lives with you, <laughs> with us. And, and they're very beautiful pieces. And again, thank you for supporting art the way you do. Um, it's, it's not everybody who who does or who even understands the importance of doing so. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So are there any other pieces you want us to see or you want us to go into the garden? Uh, we're going to the garden. Garden? Now? Okay. Brilliant. Is this from Ghana too? Oh yes. This is from Ghana. This is actually from um, 
uh, um, a, uh, an artist who uh, sells his goods in uh, the Dubois Center. Okay. So that's where he met him. We met him, his name is Ninoi, okay. and uh, he normally does um, uh, small tables, uh, mirror frames, uh, coasters, um, and we looked, uh, we liked his work very much, but normally he takes patches of different colors of fabrics, he's a, resort, a sort of, uh, of patchwork. What we wanted was something a little bit more sort of elegant, because this is also to show, so yes. we bought fabric at, uh, at Woodin, and uh, he did this for us. This is beautiful. It's really nice. Uh, he plastifies the, the fabric. Beautiful. So I, I, I'll take his. Do you have his number? Yes, we I'll do. I'll get his number from you later on so that I can support the business and maybe do an interview with him as well. Ah, and yeah. Some of the other artists that you've mentioned too, so that the, the visibility you wanted to give them, it's my, I may give to you, Your Excellency. Oh, so thank that you. We can also showcase them to the world as, as your heart desires. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to the garden now. Absolutely. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. This is still Diplomatic License on City TV. And when we return, we take a walk through Her Excellency's garden. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Diplomatic License on City TV. And my name is Apioko. And my guest for the second week running, of course, is Her Excellency Diana Conchia, Ambassador of the European Union to Ghana. And currently, we're just taking a walk through her garden and we're going to continue wonderful conversations. But do remember that we're live on DSTV channel 363 and GoTV channel 182 as well. And use the hashtag diplomatic license to interact with us. So Your Excellency, um, how did you end up in Ghana? I mean, last week we spoke a little bit about your diplomatic journey and how um, you, know, you started working with the European Commission 25 years ago. But how did you end up in Ghana? What countries were you posted to before? How did it all happen? Okay, um, I spent most of my career in Brussels, actually. Okay. Uh, I am uh, an expert on trade policy and trade negotiations, so that was, that's what I was doing. I worked with uh, a lot of countries, uh, a lot of different countries. Uh, then I spent four years in Uruguay already, almost 15 years ago. And then I went back to Brussels and I thought I wouldn't uh, leave again. <laughs> but then um, uh, when I became a manager there, I decided that I wanted a new adventure. So I applied uh, to join the European Diplomatic Service because we do have a diplomatic service. Um, and I accepted my application. Um, I didn't get a lot of choice of the country, I have to say. I had said I was uh, happy to go to a country in Africa. Okay. They proposed Ghana. And I thought it was a very, very good proposal and I accepted it. And that's why how I'm here. Very I, simple. What has the experience been like so far? It's been a very strong experience, I would say, uh, on a lot of points of view. It's the first time I live in Africa and okay. that's, uh, that's quite a change compared to living in Europe, of course. Um, it's been a strong experience also from the point of view of work because um, I am very interested in uh, development issues, so mm -hmm. how a country makes a journey from uh, being uh, a developing country, if you want, uh, from having a uh, you know, high level of poverty and uh, uh, lots of challenges in uh, political and economic terms, yeah. how a country uh, has the transition mm -hmm. to becoming a stronger country, uh, what you call an emerging country, having uh, a strong governance, having a strong economy, competitive companies, and most of all, which is the most important, taking people out of poverty. Yeah. So this mechanism uh, has always been at the heart of my work. When I was working in trade policy, I was mostly working with developing countries, for example, in Southeast Asia. And now being here and uh, having the possibility to sort of live in this reality and really see how the country functions has been a great opportunity for me. Yeah. So Your Excellency, I, I know when it comes to your interest in Ghana, you and the EU as a whole have been very instrumental in working through environmental challenges, sustainability ventures and, and whatnot. Of course, we've spoken about your art and how you're giving back on that front, the work you're doing there. But what are some of your other interests in Ghana? Well, uh, the uh, interesting... Even, uh, the, even the simplest ones. But the simplest <laughs> one, uh, you know, I, I'm a simple person. Yeah. I, like, uh, I like good food, I like nature, I like the sea, as we already yes. had the, the, the time to discuss. 
Um, so Ghana is giving me occasion to, to explore uh, new, uh, I would say, facets of this interest. Uh, so, for example, in, uh, in Ghana, uh, Ghana is a great country for bird watching. Mm. I like birds, but I have never done properly bird watching before. But here it's so beautiful. But that's very interesting, right? You started doing bird watching in Ghana. Uh, yes, because <laughs> Ghana is actually one of the best countries in the world for bird watching. Uh, it is well known. I didn't know before coming, but it's uh, well known as uh, one of the hotspots of, uh, of birding in the world. And this garden is in itself a, a hot spot because we have so many species of different birds, it's amazing. And, and so many species of different plants as well. It's, so I was saying to you earlier that it's almost like you have a bit of the forest, a bit of the savanna, and then a bit of your, your quintessential or typical backyard garden. You have the best of every world here, yeah. you know. Did you come meet it like this or you planted something? Um, I, no, I mostly found it like this. I did a lot of uh, changes actually to the house okay. uh, that was not in uh, such a good state when I, when I arrived. Because this is an but, old uh, house. The, yes, yeah. so the house was, was um, in need of some uh, renovation and it will even need more to be uh, in an ideal state. But the garden, I largely found it like this. I had added some flowers, like the flowers that are behind the swimming pool we have added recently, but it was mostly like this. And it has this uh, sort of semi-wild look yeah. uh, that I like very much because it's, it really gives us the impression yeah, of these big nature. trees here. It's almost like when the Jungle Book or the Lion King, when you look yeah. at them. <laughs> yeah, and then we have the, the big tree, the big tree there, uh, which is really uh, watching over uh, everybody. The, there are different species of birds that, uh, that have their nests there. Um, and this is apparently a very local tree which is called Chen Chen. Mm. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's, it can be found in, in different parts of Ghana. And it's, it's very, very beautiful. Beautiful, very beautiful. And you know, when uh, uh, during the, the lockdown and during the, the past months where we have not gone out very much, it has been uh, an incredible blessing to have this garden because we have really, really enjoyed it as a family. Uh, there was not so much occasion to have company uh, during that period, so we were here and we, I feel very lucky to have lived the, the Corona period in Ghana uh, rather than, than in Europe uh, because of having this beautiful space uh, and also because I think in Ghana we have not had the scare that uh, they had in a lot of parts of Europe and particularly in Italy mm. and they are still scared now or they're scared again now because yeah. it's getting worse again. How are you coping? I know you have family back in Italy. How are they coping? How, I, that must be emotionally draining for you at some point. Uh, yeah, uh, when the crisis was at its uh, height uh, in Italy, my parents were very, very scared. They were scared for themselves because they are uh, well, elderly, but also for me being in Africa because they didn't understand that actually here it was easier. So they were very, very worried. Okay, so Your Excellency, I see a lovely summer hut here. So maybe we can continue our conversation there. Okay. <laughs> I've been making you stand for a long time. <laughs>Welcome back, you're still watching the Diplomatic License on City TV. Once again, my name is Apioko, and we're live on DSTV channel 363, GoTV channel 182. And do stay interactive, use the hashtag Diplomatic License. And as you know, or in case you just joined us, let me tell you, I've been having a conversation with Her Excellency Dinah Concha. It's the second week that I've spent with her. She's been very gracious, a most wonderful host, <laughs> and she is the ambassador of the European Union to Ghana. And we've been having brilliant conversations, Your Excellency. Um, before we went on the break, to come and sit on this beautiful summer hut. Um, your, you. your house is just gorgeous. Thank you. Every corner. But let's talk about this piece before we even continue. I, I see, is it um, pieces of coconut? Um, cups of light bulbs, bottle caps as well? Yeah. Very well spotted. <laughs> this is... Uh, 
uh, another piece from the uh, the workshops uh, that we had uh, some time ago at the Alliance Française, okay. the follow-up to the beach cleanup. Yes. This is material that was found on the beach, uh, including the uh, you know the small branches up there. Okay. And uh, this is another of uh, the pieces that uh, the kids and young people made uh, that participated in the workshop. So just like the candle holder that I fell yeah. in love with last week. <laughs> okay. That one. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Your okay, Excellency, let's talk a little bit about uh, more about you and Ghana. I mean, you have a family. I've met your daughter Olivia. She's just a bundle of joy, you know, all around. Love her energy. Love her confidence. But you have a wonderful better half. And last week we did speak a lot about him and how supportive he's been um, throughout your career. And um, I, do we get to meet him? Or, like, can can we call him? Of course. He's carrying a very interesting contraption with him. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello. <laughs> so this is join Dick. us. Hi. <laughs> See you You're welcome. Ah. Dirk is from Belgium, as you've already heard from uh, my daughter, I think. Yes. yes. I think she mentioned it. So yes, she uh, did. She so she said you're from good. Italy, you're from Belgium, mm -hmm. and she mentioned that her parents met in Brussels. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. And that is uh, from the Dutch-speaking part of Belgium, yes. uh, the Flemish region. So, um, uh, before you ask me, I have not learned Dutch, <laughs> as, but well, Dirk speaks, uh, speaks quite good Italian, actually, even ah. if I make fun of him, but his Italian is quite good. <laughs> My Dutch is, uh, is, uh, is almost non-existent, uh, but if I am really in big trouble, I can speak Dutch, but, yeah. but otherwise I prefer not to. She's being modest as usual. Oh, she, I'm, I'm sure she is. I'm sure She's she much is. much better than she says. <laughs> I'm sure she is. But uh, the two of you met in Brussels. Now, Your Excellency, um, some time ago we met, you mentioned that a lot of Europeans find themselves in Brussels at some point, especially when they're starting out in their careers and whatnot. So can we talk a little bit about that? How do people end up in Brussels? <laughs> okay. Well, um, first of all, because uh, there are the European institutions, uh, is uh, I think only in the Commission is uh, 30,000 people, and there will be another few thousands working in the Council and in the European Parliament, okay. which is the other big institution of the European Union. But then uh, this is just, if you want, the tip of the iceberg, because then there is a lot of uh, other uh, sort of. Uh, bodies that gravitate around uh, the, the Eurocrat world. <laughs> so there would be like lobby that. groups, uh, there are a lot of lawyers, uh, there are uh, representatives of uh, companies, uh, there are also all the European associations of, uh, of different businesses and industries. So, you know, Food and Drink Europe, for example, mm -hmm. they're in Brussels and they also employ a number of people. Okay. Uh, so all this is the, the, the constellation, if you want, of the uh, European interest. So there all are the stars uh, NGOs that we see on yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. flag. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> there are NGOs, uh, all the development partners. Uh, uh, then there is NATO as well in Brussels. No, they okay. have nothing to do with us, but NATO also employs a lot of people and has its own uh, galaxy around it. Um, Brussels is a big business uh, hub, uh, business and industry hub. Okay. So what's it been like as you travel a lot, Your Excellency, and um, Dick, you have to follow her uh, around, if I can put it that way. Uh, but I know you're a man who has a career yourself. Yeah, okay, well, so so what, what, what were you doing back in Brussels? Um, I worked as an IT professional okay. for like 23 years with the same company. Okay. Um, it was a consumer aid organization, mm -hmm. basically. When Either consumers are into trouble with okay. that bought the wrong product or something, something's gone wrong with it. Okay. We help we help them to okay. defend themselves. Or also on a larger scale that if we noticed that certain products were not up to standard, we would announce that to the press, we would lobby for a better um, law being made around it. So that okay. was the main aim. And I uh, handled, let's say, the databases for that company, okay. uh, all which was also internationally uh, connected with others organizations over Europe. Okay. So I also got to travel a bit, a okay. lot less than uh, <laughs> ambassador, of course. Um, but as for following her around, well, this is our first posting. Okay. So when I went to Uruguay, I was by myself. Okay. Exactly. I yeah. hadn't met him yet. Yes, okay. I was pre-me. <laughs> <laughs> so but what has the experience been like? And 
I mean, it, you've had to move the whole family. You've mm -hmm. had to, yes. to leave work to be in Ghana. Mm -hmm. What has the experience been like? Uh, well, you know, it's, I'm a pretty static person sometimes. I will just go and keep on going. And okay. I'm, I'm content. I'm, I'm easy go with the flow. And Diana looks more for, let's say, new things. <laughs> so, in a way, she gave me possibility to also make new experiences. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful for that because even though she thinks like, okay, I've taken you away from your job, that job was a job. Yeah. Paid bills and had nice colleagues, but it, it's the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Even though there were some interesting things. So now I've been able to, let's say, unfold new aspects of my personality. Mm -hmm. uh, been able to, let's say, um, get some of my energy in new things. I've been following painting classes. <laughs> We've been, uh, well, we're doing beach cleanups. I got to your co-organized the Europe Day two years ago. Which was beautiful, by the way. I still remember the horse. Mm -hmm. um, was it a big eagle there as well? Eagle, yes. That was one of the most beautiful mm. um, national days I'd ever seen. The whole field here was yeah. filled with art. It was so wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. The horse was from Joseph Kola, the guy of yes. the musicians in oh, the house. Oh, I see. And nice. it's, it's in the recycling spirit because all the art that we had in the garden that day was recycled and uh, he recycles these mechanical parts, so it's fully, fully line. It, it was such a, a brilliant experience. I remember it very well. And my, my TV director, um, he's directing the show, shout out to Nida Kumo Shata. He was here, so he's the one who actually drew my attention to it. I stayed for a very short period, but he was here filming the whole thing and he's not been able to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, great work. But I see you're wearing batik as well. Yeah, well, that's the <laughs> other thing. There is this... Uh, organization to keep the spouses of the ambassadors involved and having in their own network and I was very fortunate to be gotten into that group and one of the things that we did was uh, batik sessions yeah. together with um, the new horizon school this is a school for yes uh, let's say special children, needs yeah. Yeah, special yeah. need children yeah. uh, so they offered these workshops and we got to do our own oh so fabrics. you made this one I made this one and then gave it to a tailor uh, via our driver actually, he knew some tail, mm -hmm. so then he made it. Your Excellency, you have a textile production house right right in your home. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Olivia also did Olivia some batik also ones. Did yeah. Some, uh, some yeah. materials, yes. So, you know, they are the artists. Uh, I cannot do anything. I like everybody, uh, other people's art. I can't draw, I can't play any instrument, I can't sing. I'm a very boring person, <laughs> but uh, um, I have some creati but, but your, creativity your, your in my house. are always very beautiful, so clearly you're a fashionista. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as somebody else is sewing <laughs> them. <laughs> Don't ask me to do anything, you know. I think I can, uh, I can stick a button on, on the shirt and no more than that. <laughs> but it's wonderful. And I see you have this very interesting, is it an instrument? It's uh, a musical okay. instrument, it's called uh, a han. Okay. Or hand pan. A hand pan. I'm taking off my ring. I only do that to play this instrument to, do, <laughs> to go diving. I'm putting it here safe away because I don't want to damage it. Okay. Um, it's an instrument which was originally created in Switzerland. Okay. And so it's called a hand because okay. hang is a Swiss word for hand. For hand. Okay, so hand. So you play it is like this. Oh. Um, and it's inspired let's say from steel drums okay and it's been around for like 25 years or something okay. or longer okay. uh, and when i saw it 20 years ago in barcelona it's like wow i would really like to have one of these and even though i'm not you know a percussionist or a real um, musician yes <laughs> um, it's just such a beautiful thing that i wanted and here i found some musicians with whom again i could actually hang out a little bit jam a bit without having to be worried about how good I was playing. <laughs> um, Your Excellency. So that's, that's one of the things. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a happy so man. That's huh? a oh, this is wonderful. Improvise with this thing, and it's wonderful. Once you get the hang of how to tap it, you can get all kinds of sounds out of it. It's wonderful. But uh, so, um, I mean, we're wrapping this conversation up very shortly. But, Your Excellency, how do you 
deal with some of the challenges that come here because I mean we've been here spent we spent two weeks with you we've invaded your space that can't be easy <laughs> um, and then I'm sure there are challenges that come with work as well how do you maneuver some of these challenges I but this is a difficult question because uh, yes my job is challenging my job can be stressful but I don't think my job is particularly difficult okay. um, and uh, I still think that we are very lucky people we can live for uh, a few years in this beautiful space <laughs> um, we can enjoy the attention of, uh, of, of the, you know journalists like you. Mm. Yes. When I go back home in Brussels, uh, nobody is going to interview <laughs> me, probably. <laughs> Maybe, like yes, to ask me about some details of, uh, of trade policy and, uh, you know, tariffs <laughs> that I don't even want to mention. So um, we can do, the beauty of this job is that uh, um, you can do a lot of things that you like. You can shape it uh, at your will. So um, I, ha I am lucky because uh, I have uh, I wouldn't say at my disposal because it is uh, well everything that we do is agreed with the government and in headquarters. But uh, the European Union has uh, gives a lot of development aid to Ghana, okay. uh, which again when I arrived most of it was already committed to our different activities. But um, there is always the possibility to find funds for something you believe in. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to do nice things, uh, and to do valuable things, uh, you don't need uh, to have a lot of money. And also, within the, the policies that I have to implement, I have an enormous space mm -hmm. to do what I like and to shape them the way that I want to shape them, to, to give them mm -hmm. my own twist. So, for example, when I go somewhere, I always try to meet women. Okay. So um, uh, yesterday I was in uh, Tamale uh, to launch this pre-harvest exhibition, that's very good. Um, but then I wanted to meet the women that were participating in the exhibition because I know that women have peculiar challenges. Yes. And I spent a great evening speaking to these ladies that are into farming and helping other women uh, in, in their work. Um, and at the beginning they were a bit shy and then as it always happens with Ghanaian women they talked a lot yes. especially <laughs> when I asked them about the husbands and then oh <laughs> then hell, the hell broke loose <laughs> <laughs> so um, and uh, the how much the husbands don't cooperate and how much they have everything on themselves yeah. and how much the husbands actually try to try to keep them behind yes. and that was really interesting to have this possibility so or all these environmental activities, they don't cost a lot of money, uh, but it is very important to, to do them. So there is a lot of space to shape and that compensates the, the responsibilities mm. and the stress of, of the job. So you have to take the good and the bad of it. Um, and I think that uh, when, uh, when you look back to things, uh, you always remember the good and forget the bad. Sure. So I will finally remember all the good things of Ghana and I will forget when I was terribly stressed because there was an event and things were not ready and you know. It's true. Well, I mean, that's wonderful. And, and Dick, what about you? I mean, again, you've, you've moved a country, first of all, a country you've never ever been to before. True. I'm sure you never dreamt of coming God, to Ghana. No, 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 no. I don't know, if it, is it your first time like in Africa? Uh, no, I've been to Africa before. Okay. I went to Senegal and Gambia. All right, so it's not new terrain, no, no. but new to Ghana. New to Ghana. And, and definitely um, you're coming in. Yes, you've discovered all these things, but there must be challenges as well. The, the culture is very different, the food. I mean, I'm sure you have um, a wonderful chef or cook who helps to bring Brussels yes. to Ghana. <laughs> uh, well, you know. no, we taught him, let's say, some of the dishes that okay. we liked, and we had, even our gardeners was actually cooking for us from time okay. to time. Oh, fufu, fufu. oh wow. Oh, so you like there. fufu? Yeah, 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 we do. We you do. too, Your Excellency. I do like fufu, hey. eaten at lunchtime, <laughs> exactly. not before going and to bed. Exactly. No. Exactly. I don't know how people and do it. And then, you know, yeah. you, had a, so you have a good lunch and then you don't eat anything. <laughs> for yeah. Because now you're so sleepy. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so, wonderful. So that's, uh, the challenge is more, let's say, um, running the household here with yes. the staff. That's a new experience for me. I've always had my computer and my data and that's fine. Yeah. I've yeah. always tried to get away from management. So here I was 
no, yeah. we didn't. That was the main challenge, I say. Other than that, I was already much involved in my daughter's education. Yeah. So in Brussels, I would be the one bringing it. Stand up, Dad. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Reminds me of my own. Mm. That's good. <laughs> yeah. No, so that's, that's continued. Um, but again, I've been having very nice experiences here. Also, with, with the less nice aspects, like we've been helping organizations in Jamestown yeah. to set up the schools, to help the schools. Okay. But you see so much spirit there and the children. It's so inspiring. We've had an event, actually, at my daughter's birthday last year, where we were able to invite some of the children over here. It's so oh. fun. We had a bouncy castle. They went into the pool which was also a bit of a, a chaos. <laughs> but there was one very small kid uh, who was like, I don't know, five, six years old and so full of energy. I mean, you think our daughter is energetic. <laughs> you should see this guy bouncing around all the time. And that's a really hard for me that defi say, despite difficulties, mm -hmm. that a lot of the people here, they just keep going. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's very nice to see and, and makes us also want to help out. Okay, we, we have a limited means of our own. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we can also help with some of the funds, but we don't. We're not at liberty of just of, saying, of "Okay, let's donate." Okay, like yeah, this. not plucking it from trees. No, no, that's <laughs> so not the way it works. We have too many mm -hmm. other instances controlling yes. that budget. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say it's nice to be able to do something and to get in touch with other people here. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. That's, that's been a very nice um, experience. Okay. Yeah. So, Your Excellency and, and Dick, thank you so much for, for spending time with us. The crew wears their gift, but before I present the gift to Your Excellency, which I hope you love, is there anything that you really want to share? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Apjorkor, for this question, because uh, I had um, a very strong experience actually yesterday. Uh, in Tamale. We have a project uh, um, together with the uh, IOM, the International Organization for Migration. Okay. We uh, fund IOM uh, to help uh, Ghanaians that have got stranded uh, mostly in Libya. Mm. They trying to, to sometimes trying to go to Europe, but sometimes in the past they wanted to go to Libya yeah. because they thought that there were jobs, jobs there, and exactly. then you know uh, hell exploded there. So um, we we are funding them, and they actually help these people. I have done already a lot of activities with this project. I had already visited in the past uh, a young man in, uh, in Kumasi that had uh, set up a business with their help. But what I did yesterday was uh, I went to visit a training center that IOM has in, uh, in Tamale. Okay. They put together a group of about uh, 25 of these uh, young people and they give them a training. It's people they have rescued in, in Libya, they take them back and then they help them reintegrate in their community. Mm -hmm. Because uh, young people coming from these uh, attempts to migrate, for them it's difficult to come back because they feel that they have failed. Yeah. And so they feel that they are no longer accepted by their communities, uh, that they are, not, they are worthless. So what they do, they give them a training to support their self-esteem, their um, really their taking care of themselves, and, uh, and then they give them some basic training uh, to help them start a business. So I went there, they were finishing their training day, and I asked a few of them to speak and to, to tell what, they, what had happened to them. And it was one of the most uh, uh, heartbreaking uh, half hours that I've spent in my life. They came and they started telling how they tried to go to Libya, they paid a lot of money for the trip, and then uh, they arrived in Niger, you know, in Agadez, where uh, there is a sort of uh, point where everybody stops. Yeah. And they ask for uh, more money, so they give more money. They arrive in Libya and then they are asked for more money if they want to go to Europe. And then they don't have more money, so they are put to work for free and terribly exploited and bad treated. All of them had been arrested at some point, they'd gone to prison. There was a young woman that had uh, given birth in Libya and just after giving birth she had gone to prison. She had stayed in the prison for three months with the baby. With and the now, baby? Yes. And now she was there uh, with the, the, the baby was uh, is I, she must have been two more or less. So the baby was there, she goes every day to the training because the nursery school is closed. Um, at the end of, uh, of this uh, uh, half hour with them, I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't talk anymore. I, I, almost, I almost cried 
Um, so I would like to pay tribute to these people of IOM that are really like the angels because at some point they find these people, they go there and they take them back and then they help them build a better life. So um, I would really like to, to say to everybody that is watching your program, um, please do not try uh, to, do not attempt irregular migration. Mm. Don't think that the pastures are greener somewhere else because they aren't. Mm. There isn't a dream out there. Uh, it's a dream that will almost certainly end up in tears. Um, if you are able to put together some money because they need a lot of money to do this trip, use it mm. in Ghana, start a business. Mm. There are a lot of opportunities here. Don't squander it to give it to these criminals. I really wanted to say that because I came back from that really shaken. Two of these guys have started a business. One of them was, uh, has a tricycle and he transports people and another one uh, sells uh, shoes and sandals at the market. They were wonderful and very brave young people and uh, they, you know, if you avoid, you can avoid this, uh, a lot of suffering can be avoided if uh, people know what is waiting for them on the other side. So I didn't want to hijack your program uh, to, to talk about this, uh, but this is something that really has, uh, has shaken me and I think it is really uh, a wonderful use of the European Union funds uh, because it's having a direct impact to, to help these people. So that, that was it that I wanted to share. Yes, please, of course. You said that you were so in awe of this, the, the local artists that, that we have in our house, and that's, that's what should be made more public. That are so many this was like made this. By, by one of the artists as well. This is made by the same uh, person, Nino. Nino. That oh, the partition and the coasters. Okay. We have this top of the table was completely ruined, yeah. and we just asked him, okay, can you make us something new? We came, we worked on something together, and here it is. And I'm sure there are so many other things that can be done uh, where you don't need to have a high college degree yeah. where lots of people can actually participate and you know, so that's there's so many opportunities but people have to be shown that they're there I think to that's get wonderful. ideas to be inspired Thank and that's what you guys can really be also yes uh, thank you, know. you both for sharing that because um, from time to time we do get messages from people believe it or not who are telling us that they're stranded and they want to come back and the truth is that the government can't help every one of them um, sometimes you, they don't even know how to go about it. They're stuck in place and I mean pr particularly the lady you spoke about who had the baby in prison, uh, had the baby and then went to prison wasn't, uh, I, I can't imagine what, what, what that would be like and thank you very much for, for, for putting this out there and please if you have the contacts of IOM um, and any of the people you spoke to I, I can say this on authority that I would be very glad to reach out to some of them so that they can share their stories to inspire but then also see how we can link them to other people who can help them in business and reintegration into the society. Again, Your Excellency, um, that's something that I would like to do for you, help in any way I can. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. So um, we're, we're wrapping this up. When we come back, I present our gift to Her Excellency and then we say goodbye. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, hi, welcome back. You're still watching Diplomatic License on City TV. And just for a few minutes more, I'm still speaking to Her Excellency Diana Concha, who is, of course, the ambassador of the European Union to Ghana and we were just talking about the birds you know earlier we spoke about bird watching and she was pointing out that a hornbill is sitting on one of the branches and it's gone oh it's gone and then we've got the the kite oh look at that <laughs> lots of birds but your excellency once again thank you so much for having me um, there's a little game that I like to play with my guests so I'm just going to mention 10 words and then just mention the first thing that comes to mind when I mention each word it's a very simple game. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, number one. Food. Fufu. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Fashion. Design. Design. Interesting. Okay. Art. Paintings. Paintings. Okay, so you, I think paintings are your favorite kind of art, as we've seen. They are, yes. Okay. Color. Red. Red. You like red? Yeah. So do I. One of my favorites. Okay. Home. 
Family. Family. Wonderful. Okay. Book. Novel. Novel. Yeah. All right. You're good at this game. Um, weather. Sun. Sun. Okay. But not when it's too hot, though. <laughs> no, um, I was going to say rain, but that's, you know, that's going to be back in Belgium. For now, it's sun. So now it's sun. Okay. Ghana. Women. Women. Mm. See, the Ghanaian women have made a great impression yes, on you. Yes, they have. Okay. Um, Travel. South Africa. I hope it will be my next oh, trip. You, you really love South Africa. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then the very, very last one, love. Family again. Family again. I'm a family person. You are, yes. Yeah, you it's know. very Italian. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, after uh, a certain age, I think, uh, I think love is your family yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and your loved ones. Yes, beautiful. Excellency, thank you so much for spending time with us for two weeks. I have a gift for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I don't, thank okay, you. so I'm going to let you nice. open it. Yes, yes, please. Thank you very much. You're very really welcome. Moved. Actually, it's been really a pleasure for me. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed your yourself. Share. Okay, so we know how much you love the beach. Oh, um, this yes. This is a picture that was taken of around the Sakumono beach, right? Yes, and our director, who also happens to be one of Ghana's best photographers, took it and we just thought, oh. you know what, we need to film, uh, frame it for you. So okay. after the beach cleanup, um, we realized that this was a perfect gift. So Thank you very much. It's so something you can beautiful. take home with you. This is beautiful. I like the sea and actually I like sunsets. Oh, I right. like taking pictures of sunsets myself. You got it right. Ghana has some beautiful sunsets. It does. Unfortunately, from this house, I cannot see the sunset. Yeah. But uh, uh, there are beautiful ones. So I will take this with me and, uh, and it will be a very nice uh, souvenir of the time that we spent together. Very well. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thanks to you, and, it's been and a pleasure. I look forward to working with you on some of your projects, whatever they may be. The next beach cleanup, maybe traveling with you to meet some more Ghanaian women. And of course, the launch of your art exhibition um, in collaboration with the Kunyehia Trust in February. Yes. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, once again, this has been Diplomatic License on City TV. I've spent two wonderful, beautiful, exciting weeks with Her Excellency Dina Concha, the ambassador of the European Union, the EU, to Ghana. And she is a wonderful personality, a strong woman, um, somebody who I think everybody, if they have the chance, needs to know. Um, you should follow her work. She's doing so many great things in Ghana, um, also with her, her establishment, the European Union here in Ghana. And um, I'm very blessed to have spent time with her and to know her so we've been live on DSTV channel 363 don't forget also on go tv channel 182 and stay tuned next week there's so much more to come but between then and now do follow us with the hashtag diplomatic license interact with us see what's going on and really just stay tuned my name is apioko see you next time